Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we're going to have a look at how I've completed this commission piece. This is Bruce and I've completed this piece with Faber-Castell Polychromis pencils on Fabriano Artistico paper. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper and pencils I've used and if you like this video remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to see any of my previous work you can add me on Insta and check out things I have for sale on Etsy. So let's get started drawing Bruce. So I always begin with the eye, it's just a really good place to start and it's a really good place to build on from. So once you've completed the eye, you can start putting in fur around the face. So I started by going in with the dark sepia pencil just really lightly. Once you get the outline that you want, then you can go in with a harder pressure and start to put in all of the shapes that you can see. If you're going with a really dark pressure at the start and then you're not happy with it, it's really hard to get up. So it is good just to go in with a light pressure to start with. I then went in the white um, Holbein pencil into the highlight to preserve the uh, white highlight of the eye so that if I do go in there with any pencil, it will still say nice and bright. Some of the colors that I went in with is the warm gray one as a base and then went in with the burnt ochre, nougat, burnt sienna and um, walnut brown. I also put some of the manganese violet and sky blue into the darker sections in the pupil and around the eye as well. So the way to get that really glassy shiny look in the eye, what I do is go in with a couple of layers of color and then go in with the white Holbein pencil and blend it all down. Once that happens, then you go in with more layers and then go in again with the white Holbein pencil and blend it all down. So after the eye is in, then I start to just add some fur around and start to get the tone and the color that I want for the piece. I generally start to move up on the piece and then over to the left and then down and then I move on to the right later on just because I am right handed and if I start on the right then I'll be leaning on it the whole time. So I do use my color picking sheet there just to lean on so that I'm not losing any of the outline. So one of the main things I wanted to speak about with this piece was the fur and the color of the fur so I found this really difficult to sort of get the correct color and with staffies of this color they sort of look sort of gray or silver and then they can look brown and they can look black so it is hard to find the right color to get them looking the color that they do in real life. So when I'm picking colors for a piece I use Photoshop just to open the image up and then I start to click around the image with the color selector and you can sort of see the colors in and around the animal. So when I was doing the color picking for this, I found that the dog was mostly a cooler tone. So this means I used a lot of the cold grays rather than the warm gray ones and that sort of thing. If you would like to see my color picking process, check out um, my outline and color picking video about the stag and that goes through how I use my swatches to pick the colors. So for the fur, I used a base layer of the cold gray one. And then where there were sort of darker areas, I went in a little bit darker with the warm gray one with fur strokes just to get the shape that I wanted. And then I started to glaze in some of the sky blue or light ultramarine or Prussian blue, just depending on the blue that you could see in the fur. And then I started to add in some of the nougat if it was sort of more of a brown sort of fur, like underneath the eye, it's quite brown. And I also used some of the beige red, which is a pinky color, and also some of the burnt sienna. So I start by putting in the cold gray one and then start to glaze over. So putting my pencil on the side and glazing over the color that you can see underneath the fur. They're either like blues, browns, or even purples. Then I would go in with the cold grey 3 and the cold grey 5 to start to build up the fur line. So make sure to use really short fur lines because the fur on this animal is quite short in all of the areas. And also make sure you're going in the correct direction. So you want to make sure that you're following the direction of the fur. And then I'll start to build in the darker sections with the Payne's grey and also the dark sepia. So making sure just to see where the shadows and the darker sections are. When you're putting in your fur strokes in the darker section, you want to focus them more together. But in the lighter section, you want to sort of make sure there's a gap in between them. So I thought we would just rewind here and go back to the fur on the face and show you a little bit of real time how I'm putting the fur strokes down. So making sure to go in the direction of the fur, this is a blend of blending and also fur strokes. So making sure to do your fur strokes nice and short 
And in this area, I am sort of spreading them out thinner than I would usually put them. So just above um, where I'm doing now, they would have been a lot closer together. But then in this section, I'm just trying to space them out a little bit. Otherwise, it'll just be clumps of fur, not sort of individual pieces of fur. You can see that I'm moving quite fast and then I always rotate my pencil when it starts to get a little bit blunt so that I'm always using the sharper section of the pencil. And when you're moving a little bit faster, it just makes the fur strokes look a little bit more natural and a little less uniform. So you sort of want it to look like there's a little bit of a curve to them. They need to be crossing over here and there because that's what fur looks like in real life. And then I go in and start to blend down some of the colors that I can see. So I can see some grays, blues, and a little bit of brown. So I'm adding in different colors under the fur as well. So it's just about being patient and working up the layers really gradually, and it will eventually get there. Then for the nose on this one, underneath the nose, you can see I put in some embossed lines with my embossing tool, just to make sure I got a heap of little white hairs underneath the nose. And then for the nose, I used my dark sepia pencil to lightly outline the shape that I wanted, and then started to glaze in some of the colors I could see. So the light ultramarine, manganese violet, and then started to build in some of the cold gray colors. And then for the highlight sections, I use my white Holbein pencil to put in the really light highlights. Underneath the chest, the fur started to turn really brown. So I went in with some of the burnt sienna and nougat colors to put down the base along with the cold gray one. And then into the white sections, I just used the cold gray one and some of the, the cold gray three and also some of the sky blue just to put in a little bit of blue color because putting blue in white makes it look a lot brighter. So because this section is quite dark down the bottom, I went in with my fur strokes really close together and grouped them um, really close together in clumps. So it makes it look a lot darker rather than further apart like I have on the top of the head. Then I do what I do every time, which is just leave it for a day or overnight and then come back and assess the values and see where I want to go darker and then start to add in any extras or anything I think needs changing. So finally, all I need to do is go put in those really light whiskers and this is the final piece. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and these tips have been helpful for you. If you'd like to see any of my previous work, remember to add me on Instagram and check out my work on Etsy. And I'll see you in the next videos. Keep drawing, guys. Thanks.